Ready? Sorry, Captain. No, I'm sorry. I'm Mark, can we start with Sido? Mm -hmm. um, he's done an interview today where he's uh, he said that his drink was spiked. He's revealed a few more details about the, the drugs ban. Um, do you know if that's true? And if it is, does that actually make a bit more sympathy for him? Well, that's always been Sido's stance and, and take on, on how the, the, the drug was in his system. Um, well, there's no reason not to disbelieve him. Um, we knew from the outset, so when, when we first began uh, speaking with Saido, um, that was always his stance. He's never wavered from that. So, um, yeah, maybe people understand that that happens in this day and age, unfortunately. I think a lot of people have been victim of that. So, um, that's always been his stance. So, uh, there's no reason to disbelieve that. Um, it can happen. He started the last two games for you, he scored a hat-trick behind closed doors. There's really good signs for him and then a story like this comes out. West Brom's concern always seemed to be that he was the story, the dominating story, the biggest story, whether he was playing or not. Do you have any concerns about that? No, not really. I think we keep on trying to move on from, from things and um, it's, it's just a little bit more meat on the bone from, from my point of view in terms of the, the actual um, situation and and how it came about to be perfectly honest um, it's it's happened in the past we're, we're all moving on I mean we he's playing football again he's he's, he's doing well um, been a big part of recent weeks in terms of playing good opposition um, from our point of view we're, we're looking to create more chances for him um, hopefully in, in the games that we've got ahead of us we'll we'll create few more chances obviously going up against Chelsea and Man City chances are going to be at a premium but uh, he's uh, showed good intent uh, was good in the in the practice match that you mentioned and uh, it's only a matter of time so these things will raise their head I'm sure f throughout his career um, but uh, from our point of view is something we're aware of um, Saido has been very clear in in terms of his message to us and, and to everybody who, who wants to listen. Um, and that's it, that's the top and bottom of it. it. It doesn't really affect us moving forward, in my view. Thank you. Um, are your internationals all back and how have they come back? Um, well, the, only, the only doubt is um, Shakiri. unfortunately. Um, he played 70 odd minutes and uh, thinking was that um, he did a good week's training and um, there was a possibility um, he wanted to be part of the, the the playing squad for Chelsea. I just felt it was a little bit of a risk. He would have been at the most coming off the bench, and um, and I thought that that would be more risky for him. So the thinking was that maybe he could go away with the international uh, squad, train for a good week, leading into a game, leading into a start, and um, then he'd he'd benefit from that. Um, a week more down the line, uh, and then he'd be ready to, to come back into into my thinking. But uh, he's had a little bit of a setback. Uh, it's like all these um, calf issues that he's having; they, they're never too significant. But clearly, they, they they've been repeated over and over. So we've got to get to the bottom of it because it's it's hampering him and and stopping him being available for selection. So it's a little bit of a concern, to be perfectly honest. But um, we hope we, we'll be able to get the bomber of it and give him a plan that will enable him to to be available at the moment. Uh, when he tries to step things up or gets game time, then he just gets set back. So that's that's something we we have to work out. Um, Might he need an operation? I mean, the, what you're describing no, there no, sounds as though it's so. difficult to put a time scale on it as well. No, no, no. It's he, he just gets a little bit of discomfort, uh, a little bit of fluid in the calf, and um, we just got to give him. Um, the means to, to be able to overcome that. Um, obviously, when when you go away with international squads, their their priorities sometimes are a little bit different in terms of the, their short term, their, their view. Whereas we we have to take a longer term view and try and protect the player. Um, so maybe that's compromised him a little bit because um, he had a good week leading into uh, the Chelsea game, but uh, obviously. 
he would have been doing different things with with a different group. Um, so maybe that's the issue. But um, we we don't anticipate to be um, too long. The only the only shame from our point of view is that clearly we've got three games in a week and we could have done with his talents. But uh, uh, he may well be available for. Not certainly not for Burnley, I don't think, but uh, maybe at the weekend. Okay, um, thank you. Um, speaking of injuries, Jack Butland back in training. Mm. Is he ready to play? No, no, he's not ready to play yet. He, he ne he'll need uh, a little bit of game time. We've, we've we've got some games with the under 23s that he's earmarked for, so uh, he'll uh, he'll take part in them. But he, he's looking good. Um, I think he's. In a good place, he's he's confident in the injury. Um, a little proviso on that is that um, obviously he's had setbacks in the past, so maybe we're we're a little bit cautious because obviously he he had a whole pre-season um, and had four or five games, and then still broke down on on the day before the the news this season kicked off. So we're a little bit cautious to to get too ahead of ourselves, but. Um, well, we're very hopeful that we've addressed the issue and uh, it shouldn't be too long. I know Jack's very very confident at the moment and um, looking forward to, to getting back playing. Um, we saw the round between Joe Allen and Glenn Whelan on the pitch for their respective countries. And I know what you're hardly a row, is it? Well, they squared up to each other a little yeah. bit. But, but and I know the type of player you were on the pitch, and you like a bit of fire in the belly. But has there been any issue since, or is that something you like to see? About no, it's no issue. It's, it's something, nothing. I mean, goodness me, when my player did, that kicked me granny. To be perfectly honest, if if you were in the opposition, I mean, that's how it is. Uh, the teammates they they enjoy each other's companies, but they were playing for their countries. They wanted to to win, wanted to get a positive result. So. Uh, uh, no, it's, it happens time and time again, and uh, there's no issue whatsoever. I mean, you see that on training grounds as well. So, uh, no, no problem from from their point of view. They're they're in the same group yesterday, talking, chatting. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. Um, it's been a great season for you again, um, and yet one win in seven away. Is that the only thing that's stopping you being it being an, an incredible season? Is that the one of the biggest areas of concern for you? Um, it's difficult to win away games in the Premier League, full stop, and I think that's the top and bomb of it. Um, we've, I think, the most we, we've ever done away wins in the Premier League is probably about five or six. Uh, I think we've got three or four at the moment, so um, so we've still got time. Um, so so we're not. So it's been a problem for quite some time, but that's only a consequence of how difficult it is to get positive results in the Premier League, full stop. So. Away games clearly are going to test you at times, but uh, um, I think we uh, we've equipped ourselves well in away games. A lot of times we've we've gone to places and got good performances. Maybe not got the results we we felt our performances deserved, but uh, for the most part we we always go with the intent to uh, to try and get a positive result. We don't go there and, and hope to just hang on. Well, more often than not, we take the game to the opposition. So um, I think that's helped us in terms of getting positive results away from home. We'll continue in that vein um, and see where that takes us this year. What do you make of Leicester's turnaround in the post-Ranieri era? Strange, isn't it? Well, I, I don't know. I think they've just re reverted back to, to what they were doing. Clearly, what they were doing very well last year and um, maybe gone back to the same personnel as well, uh, just to get that continuity in, in terms of what they're trying to do and what they do very well. Um, they've got a little bit of a boost, obviously, new manager bounce, and uh, that's clearly helping them. That can can happen, and we see it time and time again. So uh, they're playing well at the moment, and individuals that maybe were struggling just to, to have an impact on games uh, look like they're back in form, unfortunately for us. but. Uh, um, it's always difficult going up against Leicester because you know they're a fully committed side. You know, you've just got to make sure that their key players don't have an influence on the game. And if you can do that, then um, you've got opportunities yourself to to maybe have a go at their weaknesses because um, it's it's always difficult when you you go up against a team that maybe uh, has something to prove. Which maybe in the recent weeks that's what Leicester, as a group, as a collective, seem to. Have, had to face and um, and they res responded to maybe criticism and uh, and now now we're seeing the 
the true Leicester maybe. So it's not an easy fixture for us, clearly, you know, way to the reigning champions, uh, who's never going to be. But I uh, um, still feel we, we can go there with good intentions and, uh, and affect what they're trying to do. Finally, I just wanted to ask you about a number two becoming a number one. They are very different roles, aren't they? And you've had Mark Bowen at your side for a, no well, a, lot, a number of years now, where in a lot of places you've been. And there's a skill to being a number two, isn't mm. there? Which are very different. Could you ever imagine Mark Bowen as a number one? Or is, is, is it an unusual thing to happen? Oh, yeah, I, I could imagine. It, it, it's, um, it's a different role completely, in fairness. Uh, a number two, a good number two, is, is a buffer between, at times, you and the players, sometimes by virtue of the, the nature of my job, the, there's, there's a distance that just forms naturally just because of the role that I have and clearly the, the, that, that needs to be bridged and, and a good number two can do that. Um, a relationship between players and number two is slightly different than, than it is to the manager, so uh, um, they can get possibly a little bit closer, but um, um, I think that maybe is, is the, the issue when when number twos become number ones, that that closeness maybe changes, and uh, there's a little bit of maybe suspicion, or, or one, for one of a better word. So uh, uh, sometimes that's why it doesn't work. But um, but if you know your subject, you know your you know your role, and you you know what you want, and you've got your own philosophy, and you're strong enough to impart that on a group, then uh, it can work. Thanks, mate. Interesting. Mm. Cheers. Okay. Mark, your uh, academy side of the L the L2 is certainly attracting a lot of attention at, um, this season, much more than it has done as you've been deploying um, a foot player of the, the, the uh, month at the moment. And, uh, mm -hmm. Are you sort of like looking at some of those players to, to improve? Yeah, well, well, you've seen evidence of that this this year with the number of young players uh, being involved. Julian obviously has has made the most impact this year, so uh, we're, we're pleased with that. We we feel. Hopefully in the, in the next 18 months or so that uh, a number of players will start to come through. It's something that we haven't had for, for a long time at this club and it's something that needed to be addressed. We've, uh, we've invested in, in good quality academy players to, to try and obviously affect our ability to, to bring young players through. The, the standard is very high and the bar is set very high. Uh, to be able to produce Premier League players, but uh, what we have to do better is uh, produce players that can go on and have careers, and we haven't even done that really to any great extent. So, so that's changing, but it's a slow process. It's, it hasn't happened overnight, and we've, we've four seasons in into my tenure, and uh, it's only now that they're starting to come through. So, uh, um, we'll have to be a little bit more patient, but uh, the, the signs are good. I feel. One player particularly attracted the attention was the, uh, the enormous defender. Was it Harry? And he seems to have got the right attitude. He says uh, the manager, uh, he's very well respected, and, and when he speaks, no one else does. You know, he seems to have all the right. Uh... They're saying the right things. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's doing very well. Uh, he's had a good, good year. Uh, obviously, the youth team did very well this year, and uh, and he was a big part of that. And um, made a big decision initially to to come here uh, from Scotland, but uh, uh, we're pleased with his progress. It's still early days for him, but. Um, Shown good signs that uh, he's going to make make a career out of it. So uh, that's what we want to see. We want to see young players with potential fulfilling that that potential that they have. And um, he's certainly one that we're looking to to keep progressing and 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 be part of what we're doing in the future. Hopefully. Thanks, folks. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Good luck. No problem. Thanks a lot. <coughs>